I'd like to call to order the January 22nd, 2024 County Commission meeting. Welcome all of our guests tonight and invite you to come back any opportunity that you may have a chance to. This time, um, they can't hear me. A or Chris, or you got me. Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, Commissioner Hobbs has the prayer and pledge for tonight. Pastor Yeoman, let me introduce Pastor Mark Yeoman from Providence Church, my Juliet. Need a good church to go to, Providence is a good one. They have coffee and donuts on Sunday morning. <laughs> and you don't have to grow a beard necessarily. For sure. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> I want to be like the pastor. I'm sorry. All right, it's an honor to be with you all. Let's pray together. Please rise. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have been so faithful to us. We thank you for this beautiful community and county in which you have planted us and filled it with beautiful, amazing, talented, hardworking people. God, you have been faithful to us through this last week and the storm that we have experienced and God, in ways you have allowed us and maybe even forced us to stop and to slow down and to see you moving, to appreciate your ability to change things in an instant. Um, God, we know that even now, when the earth doesn't look like it, you are, are just preparing the soil for, for new things, new life in, in the spring. God, we pray that that would be true for Wilson County as well, that you would be working even now to till the soil for, for what you have ahead for, for this beautiful county. God, I pray for the people gathered in this room. I thank you for their, their service, their servant hearts. I thank you for, for what you have, have done in this place and what you will yet do. And so, God, we pray that in, in this moment you would um, bring your spirit of unity to this place, that you would tear down any walls that divide and just allow us to see and to live into your dream for Wilson County. God, we lift up all of the businesses and, and the farms and our fairgrounds and the schools and nursing homes, community centers, all who call this place home. We, we lift them up to you and we pray that, that each one of those places would be blessed and that each one of these uh, places that represent this community would point to you in all things in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you both. I, still don't, I don't think I'm on still. If it matters to anybody. I know you are, and that's probably not good. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll record, uh, press yes on your panel to record your presence at tonight's meeting. Commissioner Keith let me know that he would not be able to be here tonight. And Commissioner Fields, I believe, is on assignment. 23 present, 2 absent. 23 present, 2 absent. And uh, anyone now wishing to speak before the County Commission, if you would step to the podium at the back, state your name and address for the record. Uh, this is public comment period time. Seeing none, we'll close public comment period and we'll move on to the historic moment. Uh, Commissioner Jerry McFarland. Mr. Chairman, fellow member of the commission, ladies and gentlemen, kind of be brief tonight. You have a handout on your desk that talks about David Wilson. Uh, just share a few real quick things. Uh, you know, one time we were the colony of North Carolina, then the Western Territory, by when, when North Carolina became a, a, a state, the United States, uh, it ceded the Western Territory, which is now Tennessee. And that tells a little bit about it, but if you look at the last page on there, you can see what Tennessee looked like during, not, it's not on the screen there, Bob, I'm sorry, but it looks, you can see how much of this it was Davidson County first, and they split it off into Sumner County, and Sumner County took it, Smith County, Wilson County, uh, Overton County, Lincoln County, Travel County, et cetera. Well, uh, 
the people of Wilson County, as I've told you before, uh, asked for a separate county because they were south of the river and did get that from the legislature in 1799 on October the 26th. Correct, Diane? So that is the 225th birthday of Wilson County. And what I'm doing now is a fishing trip with the commission saying we really ought to do something and in the next uh, couple of weeks that is to celebrate our birthday, the county's birthday, uh, in the next couple of weeks we'll be talking to the chambers and other groups around the county to see if we can get some committees formed and see if they will in fact uh, try to put on a birthday party, Bobby, or do da or whatever we want to call it here, and uh, come together. And uh, we've got the East West Building Reserve presently, plus the big parking lot, plus some events can take place. But uh, we have it reserved for the 25th and 26th of October. Hopefully that we can get some pictorial histories put together using the, the pictorial histories that uh, Linda's put together at the archives. And in doing so, uh, perhaps on Friday, if the superintendent of school will work with us on that, get some uh, school kids to come in and say a little bit about the history of Wilson County. So that's that's kind of what we have in, our, have in planned if we can. So with that, I'll just leave it and that's your history moment for January. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McFarland. Yes, sir. This time we have a report from the steering committee. Uh, Commissioner Brown. The steering committee has a regular session. Uh, you'll find a um, copy within your packet and we will be received in the file. Second. Got a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Adoption of the agenda. Uh, also in your packet, you'll find the agenda for this evening, and we will be receiving file. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Commissioner Gentry? Um, I want to make a motion to amend the agenda. Standard Judicial Commissioner says three members. We actually have two full-time and three part-time members. I make a motion to adjust it. All in favor say aye. 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 That will go on the appointments area. Just changes from three to five. Three to five. And consent agenda, Commissioner Brown. There is no consent agenda for the evening. Okay. Special recognition at this time. I do not see any on my notes. I don't see anyone here either. Okay, so we'll move on with um, reading. Um, public hearing for the rezoning, uh, and I'll invite Mr. Tom Brashears to come forward. Motion to have a session. All in favor say aye. 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 We do have one public hearing this evening. A public hearing will be held before the Wilson County Commission on Monday, January 22nd, 2024 at 7 p.m. or thereafter in the County Commission Room of the Wilson County Courthouse located here at 228 East Main Street in Lebanon, Tennessee. The purpose of the public hearing will be to hear comments on the following application submitted by Charlie Dean of Dean Design Group representing property owner Lagardo Utility District of Wilson County. Uh, to rezone the following properties. 8,120 Highway 109 North references Wilson County property map 27, parcel 25, from C3 Highway Commercial, which is the current zoning, to C1 Neighborhood Commercial, um, approximately 0.25 acres. Uh, also rezoning 355 Woods Ferry Road and being referenced as Wilson County property map 27, parcel 16, from its current C3 highway commercial zoning to C1 neighborhood commercial being approximately 1.6 acres. And finally, also including in this request is a property owned by Yoon Yim requesting to rezone part of 451 Woods Ferry Road and being referenced as Wilson County property map 27 parcel 17 from a, its current A1 agricultural zone to C1 neighborhood commercial approximately 0.68, 0 0.66 acres, and to rezone the remainder of the property uh, being approximately 0.94 acres from A1 agricultural zoning to limited office commercial. A copy of the request is on file in the Wilson County Development Services Office or Planning Division. 
uh, here in the basement at 228 East Main Street and has been available for inspection during regular business hours. The rezoning request will be heard on final reading by the County Commission following the public hearing. Anyone desiring to comment is requested to attend and come forward at this time. Anyone here wishing to speak on the property or not? Seeing no one, we'll close public comment period here. Motion to go back into session. Go back to session. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, again, you have the rezoning before you, um, and it does come to you with a positive recommendation from the County Planning Commission. It's actually my district, and uh, I've not had any calls or concerns, and actually some folks are excited about it. Any other discussion or comments? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Let the record reflect it was unanimous. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Report from the Minutes Committee, Commissioner Denton. Yes, the uh, Minutes Committee met on December uh, the 18th. You have the report in your packet and found no need for corrections, so we move that the minutes be approved and filed. Thank you. Got a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Reading of the minutes? Move to dispense the meeting of the, the reading of the minutes. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Communication from the chair tonight. I uh, just uh, mentioned that Mr. Larry Searcy was reappointed to the Wilson, uh, West Wilson Utility District Board. No action needed on your part, just uh, something I have to read into the minutes. I do want to take just a second to talk about three quick things. One of the roads. And I know I tried to say this on the radio this morning, uh, but I know that you get hit a lot of times about us cleaning off roads and it seems like the snow can't get here quick enough for the people and then it can't get out of here quick enough for the people. But there's 865 miles of road one way. If you, they gotta go clean off both <laughs> lanes, it's over 1,700 miles. And, and they work their best to get from uh, the main connector arteries first and then work their way down. Normally Mother Nature helps us before we can ever get through all of it. And if we have a setback or a second round of snow or ice come through, we just start back over from square one. So please, um, you know, we do the best we can. I appreciate Mr. Murphy, all of his team that do that. Everybody believes their road is the most important, uh, and we understand that. And, uh, you know, we do our best to get as far as we can. I, I will uh, just say I know many roads that they got, uh, and, of course, we only hear from the ones they didn't get. But... I appreciate you, Mr. Murphy, and all of your team and what they do, because when the rest of us are home in the warm uh, house, uh, you're out on the roads. And it's not easy, uh, and it's dangerous in lots of ways of what you do for us. So thank you for that. I'll also give you a quick note on the state roads, uh, because I got several emails and some pretty tough phone calls about, well, y'all must have ticked people off at the state because their state roads not done. I've been in DeKalb and Smith and Trialton, and all of them are good. The fact of the matter is they only have one or two state roads in those counties, and so they get done pretty quick. When you look at ours, we got Mount Juliet Road, Central Pike, 141, 171, 231, 40, 70, 840, 109, and it is a ton. And so they tell me they'll get to all of them as quick as they can, but you have a lot of state roads in your uh, county, and so they're not going to put all their people in one county, they said, either uh, as well. So just know that on the roadside. Also talk just a little bit about uh, the uh, convenience centers. Our convenience centers are open and they're going. Two issues happen. When the temperatures get to a certain temperature, the hydraulics on the um, compactors don't work and, and there's nothing they can do about that. So that keeps the trash from being condensed. And then Lebanon, for example, that don't have their trash people running, uh, the Lebanon city folks come and use the convenience centers. And that's their right. They pay taxes. It's theirs too, so not a big deal there. But that gives us more volume than what we're used to. But the biggest kicker there is that the landfill in Smith County shut down. So when they shut down, I've got nowhere to carry the trash. So when the bins get full, that's why they close the convenience centers, not because they don't want to work or they don't want to be off. So Cindy's group does a great job of being out there in the cold, also cleaning off all of those uh, areas allow those, as you know, those will be hills that they got to go up at the convenience centers. Those take a lot of time. So uh, thanks to those people for what they do there as well. Um, one more thing about closing the courthouse. I try to keep you informed the best I can. 
When I first got here, I was told that you came from the school system, Mayor. This is not the school. We don't shut down for um, snow or ice. And for a couple of years, I really did go by that rule. And then I saw some other counties that did shut down. Uh, and so I realized there were some times that we would need to do that. Um, I, I, we get accused, oh, well, you know, you don't care about our employees. I do care about our employees. Um, uh, if I don't shut it down, um, it, because our rule is to get the place secure so people can get in and get out safely. If I waited for every bit of the county to be where every employee could get out on the road safe and come, we wouldn't open up until Mother Nature took over. I, I can't choose one or the other. So we do our best to secure our grounds. Now, then I get accused on the other side, well, Lebanon on Tuesday night had a city council meeting and they were open. Uh, well, I go back, the cities are a little bit different than we are because they have public works. I don't have public works. I got Robert and his four guys and, and they do a great job because when you think of all of the properties that we got along with Quentin uh, and his crew and we actually did um, a team effort on buying a bobcat that we share with them that they use every day in the barns out there and then when it comes bad weather he brings it up here and scrapes the road because Mr. Murphy really can't come off the roads to come scrape the courthouse because that's and he knows that's his priority to be out there and not be with us so we have lots of properties to try to take care of and get ready so that's when we're out Tuesday and Wednesday uh, and we do our best to be open for our citizens but just you know we're a little bit different um, than the cities on that so if you see them open and us not it's not that we don't want to be um, hopefully I covered all that any questions on anything I just covered? Mr. Gentry? Yeah, I noticed we don't have any heat yet in the courthouse, correct? Do you have any word on that? Uh, next, uh, week after next, if not next week, we'll have that. A lot of discussion on that. Well, why don't you do it during the fall or spring or summer? Didn't do it during the summer because we knew we couldn't bring in air conditioning and we did think in the winter time we could wear layers and have little heaters at our office. But Robert did start it in the fall. It just takes so long to get all of that done. So he's close. Hopefully, uh, heat will be here at the end of next week is what he told me today. Good question. Anything else? Anybody? I'm going to ask one favor. Uh, Miss Gail, if you will make your way up here now, and uh, Mr. Quentin, they both have kind of a quick assignment they've got to go to tonight. So I'm going to let them go first on their report during my time um, and uh, get them uh, uh, to where they need to be. So they'll give you the Ag Center report here during my time, right quick, and the Expo report. I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant to tell you. Probably. That's okay. All right. So um, you do have a copy of our packet uh, that on your desk, and December turned out to be um, another great month in the fact that we had a little over well, actually close to $14,000 um, above our expenses, which was a great way to end the year. Um, not all the numbers have come in, but that was the closest I could get with what I had. Um, and if you look at, there are three pages actually for that report. And if you look at the last page, which looks like this, you're going to see, um, some of you may not remember, but we put in a traffic count system into the expo so I can tell how many people are in the building at any point in time. And I now have that app on my phone so I can tell you how many people are in the building, whether I'm there or I'm not there. And our total count for last year was 391,455. So I don't have a lot to compare that to because this was the first full year that I had that to go by. I did look at a... Um, it's called Placer AI, and it does geofencing around the expo. And it looks like we had about 370,000 last year. So on an upward trend, and I expect that to continue to increase given the, the kind of events that we have and the quantity of events that we're having. Um, in meeting with the mayor recently, I went back and I tracked to see uh, we were talking about open days, days that we um, did not have filled with events in there which it's kind of a mixed blessing because we get kind of excited. It's like, oh, we could actually paint a wall today as opposed to we'll have another vet moving in. So it's kind of handy to have some of those days built in. But I did put a report in your packet. Um, in 2021, we had about 24% um, open occupancy. And then in 22 and 23, it trended at about 21%. 
So uh, again, that just goes to we're having more events in there. And um, I gave you a recap, and it looks like this. It's the one that I've been doing, keeping track for you for three years in a row. Our total profit for the end of 2023 was $177,706.88. Um, very excited about that. It is a little less than, than the 2021, but if you back out that $50,000 that we got from the state in 2021, it's actually pretty close. So um, we're excited about that. Notable is the preferred provider program. It brought in over $111,431.44. That is a great jump, and I'm pleased to say that the preferred providers are actually very excited about being in the program, and we've had more now than we've ever had before. And I still have, on a weekly basis, I get at least two inquiries about possibly submitting applications for the next year. So it's growing, it's getting attention, and we've expanded our marketing resources to make sure that we get it out throughout the county. Um, and then word kind of travels and it goes beyond that too. So very excited about that. Um, and then lastly is our list of events on, for the, um, for the expo from January to April. And um, our networking, our marketing is paying off. We are getting calls constantly. Made me very sad, had to turn away a six day trade show today. Um, hopefully we'll be able to work that out for them in the future. But we're always looking for those opportunities to find that perfect blend of serving the county as well as the state. We're getting more state events than we've ever had before. Uh, word is out <laughs> at the state offices. They know where we are and they like coming here. Um, and then of course across the country. So that's my report. Does anybody have any questions for me? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Quentin. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Gill. I will let you know that, uh, you can go ahead, uh, that we have done the second three-year study. That's all right. I'll ask questions. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll ask questions. Right. I, I don't see it on the panel. If you'll push that button, that'll help me not miss you. I didn't mean to miss you there. Uh, we did a second three-year study um, for the expo, and so uh, at the next Ag Center meeting, I'll uh, let you, I will bring that to you there. I'm also going to do that and a fair report to, or how the fair uh, figures into the expo at, at the Ag Center um, to the Rotary here in, in a little while, and I'll try to bring all that report to you as well. Mr. Quentin. Okay, in, in my report, can y'all hear me? Sure. Uh, I've had, I, I'm going to try to answer some questions that I've been asked. Uh, we didn't close down any day. We had people there every day during all this ice and my crew did a nice job of getting these people in and out of the buildings without anybody falling or getting hurt. Uh, the things that's coming up, if y'all want any of you interested there, this coming weekend's the Nashville you breed uh, the Zipsy Federation. They're in the Tennessee building. We have uh, a whole slew of baby showers and birthday parties that got some of them canceled out now they're rescheduling. Uh, the February the 3rd, that weekend is the Antique Motorcycle Club. And also in the livestock facility, uh, we got a, it's a contest on mounted uh, ponies. That's the first time they've been here, and basically all the others that I listed, the Motorcycle Club and the Zitsi, all of them are new uh, folks coming in. Some of the questions I've been asked <coughs> is uh, on Wilson Promotions. A lot of <coughs> people's asked me, well, how much did they actually put into the fairgrounds I've got there? a report that the Comm Patroller and everybody's went over, they put in, uh, which most of that was put in before the fire this past year, but they spent a little over uh, $1.4 million in improvements and 
that counts the maintenance fee also. Uh, anybody else got any questions that, that I can answer for you? Good to go. Anybody? Yeah, I need a card. Yeah. I need a Quint Smith card. Can you do that for me? Do what now? I need a Quint Smith card. Get in free, get out of jail card, whatever you call it. I need it. One of, one of your Smith cards. Card. All right. Yeah. I need that in video. Commissioner McFarland. Quint, I'm giving him a card to have Boyd written on it. Okay. And I want to thank you for what you're doing out there. Any anybody, other questions for Mr. Quentin? Anybody else got a question? Mr. Denton? When will we sign our yearly contract or look at our yearly contract for next year with the Wilson County Promotions? It's, it's already been signed. It's we a three-year contract. It's, it's a three-year three contract. contract. Three, yeah, we were told last year it would be every year brought before us for our approval because it says renewed every year. At least that's what was said in this bit in this room. I'll get you a copy of it. It's on a it's on a three year. They do a three year rotation with that one, Fiddler's Grove, uh, and the Carnival rides. Uh, but I'll get you a copy of that. When I asked that question, though, we, we were said that we come and do it every year anyway. And also, the contract we saw had no figures on it, had no numbers. Well, you won't you won't get the numbers till till the audit's done. So. Uh, you know that when they when we get to audit, then we can tell you. But you can't uh, necessarily nail down what what they're going to put into the place. Depends on how much I can talk, how much money I can talk about. I think it all goes before ag management, and it's in the minutes if you go back and, and go through the old minutes, because we don't do any. Everything goes through ag management is okay by them before we let them spend the money. So if it's a project that's not helping us and them both, then uh, we, we ag management turn it down. We approved the contract with no numbers on it. So or we saw, I don't know where we had to prove it or not, but we saw a contract with no numbers. And that's so, the only contract that I've seen come anywhere from last year. I, I can bring you the contract. The contract is an agreement that they adopted with the bylaws that they have to turn a report in of where all their dollars went, which goes, like you said, to the comptroller's office. And the money then that's left over after that's done, that's what he's talking about, the $1.4 million, whatever's left over, they take and go to the Ag Committee and say, hey, this is where we would like to spend that. They work with Quentin on that to say, hey, what, what do we want to do? That way they don't do everything they want to do. Quentin doesn't do everything he wants to do. They agree on those jobs that they decide to spend that money on, and then they have a year to get that done. And then at the end of the year, we tally up and say which ones you get done, which ones you didn't get done. That was what I was saying a while ago. I did a study on the expo, and also I'll go through it every year and just go back and keep up with what they did and what they didn't do. Uh, just that's the only way I can keep up with it is do a follow-up at the end. But I can bring that to you as well. Any other questions? Commissioner Denton, I, <clears throat> it varies from year to year. So, uh, you know, we're going to get the, the maintenance dollar fee regardless of, of uh, <coughs> the rest of it. But then everything else is okay that's done out there through ag management. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the contracts we sign every year to which we set for using the expo. Miller's Grove, we, we signed three contracts, or we approved three last year. And where the numbers were were just marks, and yet we approved that contract. Uh, those numbers had to be set for the year for each one of those uh, functions, especially for the Expo Center, I know that's a, a pre predetermined fee on that, and we just, I've never seen it. So I was just asking if we, if we were going to get to a look at that again this year like we were told last year we would <clears throat> next meeting during uh during my time i'll try to bring and bring all that to everybody thank you anything else any other questions do you have a motion to approve the report <laughs> all in favor say aye aye thank you mr clinton move on with the elections notaries anybody to be added mr Addy? 
you've had no relist in front of you there. Any, uh, to hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Industrial Development Board, there are three, uh, you're to appoint three members to serve a six year term on the Industrial Development Board. I'd like to recommend for your consideration Mr. John Bryan, Mr. Lon Myers, and Mr. Luke Winchester. Approved. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Board of Health, six members here to appoint to serve a four-year term on the Board of Health. Upon your recommendation, Health Department Director uh, Alberto Valadez um, have recommended these for your consideration. Dr. Chris McAteer, Dr. James Morris III, Mr. Brian Pertle, Dr. Hardy Sarles, Dr. Teresa Larkins, Larkins and Ms. Julie Mills. What is your pleasure? Second. You got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Gentry, we'll do the appointments now for judicial. Uh, yes, judicial commissioners, we have two full-time and three part-time. I'm going to ask Ms. Lisa Colteroni to come up to introduce them. Yeah. Do them one at a time. So first I had to change my outfit before I come in here tonight because the mayor told me that I wouldn't get any of Commissioner Dow's votes standing up here in my Ravens jersey. <laughs> so. Like okay. always, he's wrong. I got a Lamar in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He didn't tell me that. Um, but anyway, go Dirty Birds. He still, um, he still believes I'm wrong. <laughs> Commissioner Swindell, please step to the back mic. So tonight I have two commissioners that I will be asking for motions for reappointment on. We'll, I'll do everybody one at a time. And then I have three um, new part-time commissioners. So first is Commissioner Stacy Swindell. She's been a judicial commissioner. I think most everybody in here knows her for over 20 years. She is my senior commissioner. She is one of my training commissioners and she does an excellent job. She is definitely an asset to our office. And I would ask that you reappoint her to her position tonight. Second. Motion is second. Now, any discussion or questions? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record reflect it was unanimous. Thank you, Commissioner Swindow. Thank Commissioner Lefevre, please step forward. This is Commissioner John Lefevre. He has been a judicial commissioner full time with my office for two years. He is my third shift commissioner. He works every night um, on third shift and he is actually one of my trainers. He is an excellent judicial commissioner, does a great job, very much also an asset to my office. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion or questions? Are you ready to vote, sir? One year? One year. Yes, sir. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> the record reflected was unanimous. Great job. Mr. Todd Gibson, could you please step to the back podium, sir? Commissioners, please let me introduce Todd Gibson. Mr. Gibson <clears throat> um, has interviewed for a position with our office. He has a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. He actually holds two master's degrees. Um, he interviewed for the position. Um, he was a full-time job, so he's interviewing for a part-time position with our office at this time. He's been with the same company in his full-time job for over 30 years, climbing the corporate ladder with that company. Um, Mr. Gibson will be uh, very much an asset to our office. His availability is very flexible, and we look forward to having him in the Judicial Commissioner's office. I'd ask for your motion. Second. Discussion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to amend this approval to a 90-day approval. I got a motion we'll for an that. amendment to a 90-day, and I got a second. Discussion now on that, and is that? Commissioners, I would. Can I see Commit the other? I'll look there. There probably speak. needs to be some explanation. The Judicial Committee that I spent all the time I had left before 7 o'clock discussing how to uh, allow for a training period and if I say this wrong, don't correct me, but uh, we've nominated uh, 
part time folks can like for a year. Once they get the job, they got it for a year. So I think the 90 days was to allow them to be trained and that type of stuff. And then if they have passed the test, they would get reappointed for a year at that time. Did I say that correctly? Yes, sir. Uh, that was the discussion. We didn't come to any conclusion in no, the committee. Yes, I agree. Okay. And the uh, other discussions were that some of these people would not take the appointment for 90 days because uh, one year is difficult to get someone to come to the work to the job because it is a it is a job that requires any time day or night to show up and and they must be trained before they're sworn in in the first place so uh, and the training takes anywhere from 30 to 60 days so, so if I understand so if I understand the, the amendment, is that you're just asking to have out of this year appointment a 90-day training period? Correct. Yeah. No? Nope. Yes, sir. So oh, okay. the 90 days is the training period is 30 to 60 days. <clears throat> so then they would be sworn in after their training period's over. But not come back in front of us. But yes. they wouldn't come back in front of us until April, essentially, because that's a Are 90 days would be April. Year? Are they if we do a year, this then they'd be appointed until January of next year. If we so do 90 really, days, they'd come back in April, and we could do a year at that point. April this year. Correct. Yeah. So you're really not amending it. You're trying to change it from the year appointment to a 90-day appointment yes. and then come back. Yes. So that would be a whole different resolution, correct? I, I, no, know, he's making a motion he, to amend. So amend it would just change it then, really? Right? If, if the amendment passes. Okay. Doesn't, okay. But it doesn't work. Can we add a direct order? Yes, I was going there. I was just trying to be clear on what he was saying. So what you're saying is amend the resolution and let it be for 90 days only. They'd come back in April for a full appointment for another year if if they're still on board after 90 days. Yes. We got a motion and a second on that. Now discussion. I'm going to go to Miss Lisa. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, commissioners, it is very difficult. The, probably the, the hardest part of my job is the scheduling in this office. We are a 24-7, 365-day office. I have to have a commissioner on duty at all times. So it is very difficult to find commissioners that have flexibility or are able to work that type of schedule. It's also difficult to find employees that are willing to take a job that really they only have for one year. To shorten that to 90 days would certainly certainly limit my applicant pool. We have interviewed the people that we have put before you tonight and when we interviewed them, we represented to all those candidates that this would be a one-year appointment. I don't think it would be fair at this juncture to now ask these applicants that are before you tonight for your vote to now consider a 90-day job as opposed to a one-year job. Um, each one of these applicants are excellent judicial candidates for a position in my office, and I would ask that you not amend the motion or vote against the motion for only 90 days. 90 days will have me back in here before you every single month. Um, originally, judicial commissioners served terms of four years. When Stacy Swindell came on, she's had a four-year term every time until the committee decided approximately a year ago to take everybody down to only one-year appointments. That also has concerns with people that have mortgages and stability and have in positions. So I think to try to shorten that to a three month would definitely, definitely be a detriment to my office. Got a discussion now. Um, Commissioner Dow? I thought these were part time. They are part time. They are part time, so they're going to pay their mortgage off a part time job. Well, how we do things, Commissioner Dow, is we bring people in part time and we always promote internally. So many of the part-time people, the, every single person that works for me at this, at this point that I have hired, starting back with Commissioner Lefebvre, has started part-time and then pr pr promoted to a full-time position. So if it's, but what I'm saying is that even if, like the uh, commissioner said, if we do 90 days, that don't mean they're fired after 90 days. That just means you gotta come back up here in April and, and present them again. Well, Essentially, yes, essentially they have to come in and ask for their job again after 90 days. And well, I don't think you're going to have a problem, though, if you got a good employee. That's what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't sit with the... Well, 
how we've always done it that's worked very well is that we have the commission vote and we hire part-time people in, they complete a training program, and then they are sworn in by the general sessions judges. They are not full-fledged judicial commissioners until they complete the training program and are sworn in by the general sessions judge. That allows for an ample training period at that time before they're sworn in by a general sessions judge. So we do have some protection and some um, some consideration there. Commissioner Cosby. So is it uncommon to have like a 90 day probationary period in a job? We've never had, had that. The way that the judicial commissioners are set up, they are, they serve terms. They're not at will employees like every other department in the county. So we've never had a 90 day or any type of probationary period. I think it's prohibited, correct? Commissioner Breeze. I actually brought this up in judicial when we met at 630. And I think part of the issues that, and I think everybody's kind of familiar with this, is we've had some judicial commissioners that we've hired who then don't work out for one reason or another. And because of the way it works in TCA, the law says that if you're appointed for a year, then you're an employee for a year. Even though we've discovered that they're not the best person suited for the job. So I think the intent here was trying to figure out a way that we could build in some type of a training program to allow these individuals to try out the job. They may not even, I mean, you may not enjoy the, the position, um, but it kind of gives both the employee potentially, you know, a, a training period and trying to decide what they want to do as well as us to be able to actually, and, and the director as well as the judges time to be able to look and see if this person is well suited for this position. So the idea, I think, was trying to figure out a way that we could do basically like a 90-day trial and then do a one-year appointment at that point. So it wasn't to say, you're only here for 90 days. It was a, to make sure that you're a good fit for the office and the office is a good fit for you as well, at which point that way you're not in a one-year appointment that you hate or that we have people who are in the job who are not necessarily the best, best suited for the position. So I think that was the intention here. So Mr. hopefully Smith. that tries to you know, explain kind of where we were going. So I think that's why Blake made the motion for 90 days was not that it was we're looking for a 90-day appointment. It's that we're trying to give you a trial period and then after 90 days, come back and we'll do a one-year appointment at that point. At least that was my intent. Gotcha. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is for uh, Madam Director. Since this is new and it's first I've heard, would you even need to speak with your candidate about this um, before a vote's even cast? Is he aware of what's trying to be changed tonight? No, he is not. I was not aware of this either. Sure. And I hate to put you on the spot, sir. And, that works. Uh, but would it be something that you might would want to entertain of maybe sit down and talk with him before you bring him to this commission? I think if this is something that we would like to entertain, that we should probably discuss this further in committee and have this going forward in the future, not retroactively to people that I've already interviewed along with Director Scruggs and have presented to the committee. So they've already been voted through the committee. They have favorable recommendations from the committee. I'll Everybody that I present tonight has comes with a favorable recommendation, but going forward, it's definitely something that possibly we could talk about and iron out the kinks. Because me, if it was me coming in as a candidate now, just hearing it, I, I might would have, I might be a little reserved hearing the potential of a 90 day. I agree, Commissioner Smith. I mean, it's something that this body wishes want, that they want to do. I, I, I do respect that, but as a candidate, I, I'm not going to speak for you. But if it was my, me personally, if I was coming to be voted in, and now finding out that things might change differently from the other. I, but it goes back to what I just said, though. If you're good, you don't have to worry about sure. that. If you're good at your job, then you shouldn't worry about that 90 days is the least of my you know, attention. I, I, don't, I wouldn't need that. You know? Commissioner Rich? I think uh, part of some of this idea that we were talking about during the committee meeting was uh, to get more information on the people that we're looking at hiring. Uh, in that 90 days, they would go through that training period, and after that training period was over, they would be sworn in, and then they would have time in that 90 days to work within the office. And 
as part of that, we would actually look for feedback from the judges that will be dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And just like tonight, uh, these three names were presented to me at 6.30. Uh, I've never met some of these people. I don't know anything about the background. Uh, I'm sure that they are very squared away, and I approved of them tonight. But I would absolutely like to have a little bit more information before I would go forward and say, hey, let's hire this person for a year from now. So I think the 90 day period makes sense as far as getting their feet wet, making sure that they like the job. And at the same time, it's, it's not something that, you know, if you do a great job, we're probably gonna put you in for a year after that. But we need to be a little bit more careful about just signing people on. And we need to make decisions that are going to benefit each department in Wilson County. And we gotta think smarter about just saying, here you go. Here's my yes. Well, Person just in Hodge. response to that, oh, can I I respond very briefly, sure. Anna? Thank you. But just in response to that, that's absolutely why we have a very thorough interview process and a background um, in with uh, human resources as well as myself. We went through several rounds of interviews um, with many candidates and vetted them out, and we bring the people to the committee that have the best qualifications and appear to be the best match for the office in terms of availability, education, and experience. So I feel like that's part of my job as a director and also working closely with Director Scruggs with Human Resources. That's what we've brought before you tonight. Commissioner Hobbs? Uh, Commissioner Costley, answer my question. Sir? Costley, and ask what I was going to ask you about as far as probationary period. Gotcha. Commissioner Kurtz? One thing to point out, uh, my comments last time that uh, there was somebody hired and put in a training program that was not nominated by this commission. And once they were nominated by this commission and sworn in, then four days later they quit. Um, you know, that I think is what uh, Commissioner uh, Hall is referring to in putting somebody in, giving them a term and put them through a training program for 60 days, letting them be on the job for 30 days. Judge Hagan was uh, in our committee meeting. Um, he was in favor of doing something like this so they could have input as judges. Um, I know that uh, Commissioner Costley uh, would, would love to, to speak on the ability to have somebody trained um, and in a position. And uh, I think we, over the last couple of years, have put our judicial commissioner's office in a position that um, is, could eventually cost the county money. And I refer to that in, in what's already been filed um, in court against us. So uh, I think a training program in a probationary period um, or a term of 90 days, what's that hurt? I don't, when I got hired, most people in here got hired at their jobs. I didn't have a promise of a job for a year or two years or four years um, and nothing against the candidates at all uh, that, that are here um, and I hate that Mr. Gibson had to stand at the podium this whole time and listen to this whole discussion um, uh, I'm not opposed either way to, to going forward uh, with uh, the motion that Commissioner Hall or taking back it up and let it run through the committee first. So either way is fine. Commissioner McFarland. Mr. Chairman, I personally agree with the director. I wouldn't even consider going to work as a school teacher or a judicial commissioner if I wasn't at least going to be there for a year. But let's, let's none of us lose sight of the fact this is part time. Yes, sir. And she can work as much as she wants to as long as the budget will stand it or put them in the closet and not work them at all. Yes, so sir. that's her, her prerogative. To uh, work them when she wants to. If it don't work out, they stay home. So I, I think we need to move forward with uh, appointment of a year, and I call for the question. Questions call for it here. Second. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? I've got uh, six in the hopper. We'll listen to them and then we'll go forward. Commissioner Gentry. I think this is tantamount to micromanaging this office. I think they've gone through the interview process. We've done this for a year. You can never, ever be sure that the person you hire is going to work out. We've worked in many, many venues around the country. I've worked in them, you've worked in them. 
You never know when you get the job if it's going to work out for you. And whoever hires you never knows if the employee is going to work out. You've got to have some faith in the process. They've gone through the process. They've offered them a year. I think this is out of bounds for this commission to micromanage this office. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin. <clears throat> yeah, I was just going to say I was going to vote against the amendment. And it's not that I'm against what's been debated. It's just I feel like the Judicial Committee hadn't had time to really work it out. They've already went out and got people to come in here for, with a year held over their head, and they've come in here in good faith. And now we're changing in the middle of the process. And for that reason, I'm going to vote no. Commissioner Costa. I forgot what I was going to ask. I think uh, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Dow answered what I was wanting to talk about. Got gotcha. you. Commissioner Breeze. I just wanted to apologize to the director as well as the uh, director of HR and our candidates this evening for this all coming up tonight because we only met at 6.30 this evening. <clears throat> so that's when you were presented. That's when I brought up these questions, which kind of led to this conversation. So I can understand Commissioner Franklin's hesitancy. And um, I honestly don't know what to recommend as a member of the Judicial Commission Committee in this situation because we are in kind of a rock and a hard place. But in past experiences, the idea of being able to actually have 90 days for people to either decide they want the job or it, it works out for your office seems like it might help some of the, the problems that we've had. Commissioner Hall. I just got a question for Mr. Jennings or Aaron. If we've got a person that we hire in for our year, but we director figures out that it's just not going to work out with this person. And the solution has always been presented in committee that we just don't put them on the, on the uh, schedule to work them. And then that's how you kind of handle you know, this person's not working out. But my question is, is if we have somebody that is still within their term, that we're just, we're just not working them, is there, we can't replace them, can we? You have, you have to file them out. So they right, what I'm saying is like, while they're still within their term, there's no way we can bring in somebody else that is willing to work or will work out. That's correct. Okay. They have the right to work. This body election. Part -time. Part -time. Part -time. Mr. Smith. Mr. Gard, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Gard. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to vote on the amendment to um, make this a 90 day probationary period instead of a year, uh, as amended by Commissioner Hall and seconded, I think, by Commissioner Kurtz, not for sure. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. So we'll do a roll call vote. If you want to vote for the amendment to limit it from a year to 90 days, vote yes. If you don't want to, vote no. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. So the amendment passes. Now we'll vote on the uh, resolution as amended. Any other discussion, correct? 90 day. Sorry for that, Mr. Gibson. So now you'll vote uh, again, same thing. You're voting on the resolution as amended uh, for the 90 days. Um, are you ready to vote? Okay. So the resolution that we put up there at the beginning for the year got amended to where it's not going to be a year appointment. It's going to be a 90-day appointment. Uh, and then once that's done, it'll come back here for another year, uh, for a year appointment at that time. You amended that to say, yes, that's what you wanted to do because 13 of you said yes. So it's now a 90-day uh, appointment, uh, probationary period. That's what we've got. So that's the way the resolution was amended. So now you just vote confirming that resolution as amended. Does that make sense? I got a question, I got a question too. What's that? It's an appointment. It's not a resolution, but it's, it's an appointment. Yes. I still got to go back and. The vote is on the appointment of this gentleman now for a 90 minute 
Yeah. So you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got a okay. Yeah. Who's going to be the one to make the decision that they're doing the job? That'll be the director's job. She'll bring him back in 90 days. I got you, but the 13. So in, this also allows us to get some feedback from our judges, which we're we'll be working with them on a daily basis. So it gives us a little bit more feedback. Well, okay. the judges won't be working with them on a daily basis because uh, before they're sworn in, they do not sign warrants or hear bail hearings or do arraignments or anything. But those are the intricacies of my office that I understand a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of people aren't real familiar with everything that we do day to day. But there, to be a judicial commissioner, you have to be sworn in. And to be sworn in, you have to complete a training program first. So the judges won't actually see the product of a judicial commissioner's work until after they've completed a training program and been sworn in and working independently. So it's kind of putting the cart before the horse, Which with Commissioner Rich. I think Rich. when we talked about it in the meeting, you said that the training period was typically 30 to 60 days, right? It depends on the individual. Okay, so that would leave another 30 days for them to be working independently where judges would see those warrants, correct? After they do their training program, then right. they sit with another commissioner. There's a couple phases to the training programs, but as I explained in committee, we do the training program, the academic portion first, then the judicial commissioners sit with a commissioner and they shadow that commissioner. Then they kind of switch seats and then the, the new commissioner, the candidate, they're kind of in the driver's seat. So it is, it is a couple month process. So when I have to come back here in 90 days, and I don't mind coming back before you all every 90 days if that's what you'd like me to do, but in all fairness to the candidates and to the new applicants, we probably won't have much of a gauge because they'll probably just be finishing the training program, particularly part-time people, because they don't work every single day. Some people only work two shifts a week, so their training period is not necessarily 30 days. It's longer because they're not here every single day. So where we're at today, to answer your question, Commissioner Bernard, is that she will be the one to bring back this individual, Mr. Todd Gibson, in 90 days uh, if she so chooses, so chooses to do so. Com Commissioner Richford said hey, there'll be other people that will give her some input. So that's where we're at right now. What I've got on the floor is I need a motion to approve his 90-day um, appointment. Uh, I need a motion to begin with. Motion to approve. Motion. Second. Make a motion to approve it and to amend it down to 90 days. So the motion to approve has been on the floor all the time. All you've argued about is how long it's going to be. But I thought I need, to, I need a motion now to approve the 90-day. Just approve that. <coughs> Mayor. We are to 90 days. I, uh, not to argue the point, but on other resolutions that we have, we voted back on the, on the resolutions as amended. This is not a resolution, as she said, but it's an appointment. So, motion to adopt, right there. Yeah. So it's still on the board. Okay. Okay. So I stand corrected, but I've got. Uh, you don't believe me. No, I, I do believe you. I believe you. I'm good. <laughs> so you're voting on the 90 day appointment? Uh, vote yes if that's what you want. Vote no if that's not what you Mr. Chairman, if you don't want. And you're voting on the person now. Yes. Shouldn't we ask the candidates whether they want to accept the 90 day thing? They may not want to. I'm sure when that, I'm sure when it's over he'll tell her what he wants. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would do. Can I ask can I can I just ask a point of order? Uh, you could. I have a question. Yes. This is an appointment. This is an amendment to a resolution. It came from the judicial commission. It was unanimously recommended for one-year terms. Isn't this a brand new thing? Isn't this coming without a recommendation as a brand new appointment instead of amending the appointment term down? This should be a super majority vote, I would think, because it's a, it's a different thing than what was just recommended 30 minutes ago, or an hour ago, I should say. Not a different appointment because it's the same person. All you're doing is you're, all you're working at the time. Yep. It's the same resolution, same person, same. Not a resolution. Yeah, not a resolution. How do you amend a Heaven resolution? Heaven forbid. Do what now? We're not amending a resolution because it's We're not, not. Resolution. You're, you're, just amending a, you're amending the appointment. Are we ready to vote? 90 day appointment of Mr. Todd Gibson. Vote yes if you want to do that. Vote no if you don't. Please cast your vote.
All hearts and minds good now. Please record. Thank you, Mr. Gibson, for a 90-day appointment. Ms. Lisa. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Luis Martinez. If you're still here after all that, step forward, please. Mr. Martinez is being presented tonight to this body as a full-time, or excuse me, as a part-time judicial commissioner. Mr. Martinez has a Bachelor of Arts degree. His availability is quite flexible. He interviewed um, with the Director of Human Resources as well as myself. He displayed excellent communication skills and presented very analytical answers to all questions presented and was very, very prepared for interview and very knowledgeable about what a judicial commissioner does and the, and the working of our office. Mr. Martinez is also bilingual He's in speech and in writing. I would ask that you appoint Mr. Martinez as a part-time judicial commissioner for one-year appointment. Move Second. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to amend this to a 90-day appointment. Your second on the amendment. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Let's vote. Are we voting to appoint him or not? We're voting to amend the term a year to 90 days. Your vote is to amend the term for a year to 90 days. Change the year to 90 days. Vote yes. If you don't, vote no. Please cast your vote. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 13 yes. <laughs> now we're going to vote on the uh, person as a 90 day appointment. Are you ready to vote? Yes. Hang on a second. Ready to vote for Mr. Martinez, 90-day appointment, vote yes. If you don't want to, vote no. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 20 yes, 3 no, 2 absent. Congratulations, Mr. Martinez. Thank you. Ms. Lisa. Ms. Giles, please step to the back podium. Commissioners, I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Misty Giles. She interviewed for a part-time position with our office as a judicial commissioner. Um, Ms. Giles has a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice and sociology. She has a master's degree in um, psychology. She has experience in corrections and with the Department of Children's Services. Ms. Giles has very flexible availability, available to work any shift in my office, holidays and weekends. She eventually would like to advance to a full-time position within the office. Um, she has experience working independently, which will be very beneficial to her working as a judicial commissioner, and she comes highly recommended. I would ask that you vote for Ms. Giles to be appointed as a part-time judicial commissioner for a one-year appointment. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to amend that to a 90-day appointment. I got a motion to second on the amendment, and we're going to vote on the amendment when Ms. Dowdy gets ready. Mm 
A vote on the amendment to change it from a year to 90 days, vote yes. If you don't want to, vote no. Please cast your vote. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. Now vote on um, the Ms. Giles uh, as um, Ms. Misty as the 90-day uh, appointment. If you're ready to vote for her, place your vote to say yes. If you don't want Ms. Giles, vote no. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. Congratulations, Ms. Giles. Ms. Lisa. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Report from the Emergency Management Committee, Commissioner Bernard. No report. Emergency Management Director's Report, Director Cooper. Commission in your packet, uh, you follow along. Our yearly total for this year was 16,964. Uh, last year, the year before, about 19,000. Um, but 16 for the last five, six years is pretty average. Um, so I'm calling it average. So um, we have 12 vacancies at the time. Uh, February 12th, we'll start our next and last new hire orientation uh, we have more applicants than we have positions so that's going to be that's all i'm going to say about that hopefully it'll work out uh, i'm anticipating it too so um station 10 is open uh running calls for service they've been pretty busy since they've been open so uh, so that's good everything's open now uh, Finishing up the aerial ladder training this week. Uh, it is housed at uh, Station 3 right now uh, on Clemens Road. Uh, one for safety, because that's the, between 1 and 10 right now, that's the only base that can safely house it and have maneuverability behind it and in front of it. We can put it in one of the other stations, but it's door to door. So. That's where it's going to be for right now. And that way it can run service to Lakeview area, uh, Couchel Pike area, you know, all them different directions. So um, other than that, uh, we did get eight inches of snow or up to eight inches of snow recorded. Uh, of course, it varied from location to location, but I even told the mayor this was going to be a significant event, and it was. So. Correct. I told the truth. You did. You did. You called it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, everything went well with it. You know, uh, minor things. Uh, did have you know a few vehicles to get stuff, but we got them out okay and managed to run the calls like we needed to. So that completes my report. Unless there's any questions from anybody. Any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Director Cooper. Report from the Law Enforcement Committee, Commissioner Kurtz. Law Enforcement Committee met on Thursday, January 11th in the upstairs conference room. Uh, the minutes are in your packet. I move they be received and filed. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Sheriff's report, Sheriff Bryan. Lazy. Thank you, Mayor. County Commissioners, your reports in your packet. Uh, the numbers are actually, you never hear me say this, uh, down a little bit on pretty much all the categories. So uh, the numbers in the jail, I'm going to bring it up only because the fact that we have moved about 85% of the inmates over into the new facility. Uh, they have started working. They've been working on the old building, pulling wires and trying to get all the cameras and technology going. So uh, it's taking a little time on that. Um, as far as corrections, uh, employees that were down, were, as of today, we're down nine employees. Uh, we're, we got several uh, applicants in the in the pipeline, so we're going through them. Hopefully, as Joey said, hopefully we'll get something going there because uh, we're, we're, we're you'll see tonight we got uh, 
and the budget minimum about overtime, and a lot, a lot of that's the reason behind that. So, what? Okay. Uh, as Director Cooper said, there was a little bit of snow the past <coughs> week. Uh, it it was. Uh, I've got the numbers. I can sit here and give you all the numbers of the calls we answered. There, I, I can just tell you it was a bunch. We had more snow. That's probably the biggest snow we've had in a while. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, but let me say this. I want to commend all of our employees at the sheriff's office. I mean, they was out there every day in the cold. And uh, if they got a call, we had to answer it. Uh, it wasn't safe. They was out there risking their life. Anytime we called Wayne, anytime we called the road commission, anytime we called anybody, that they was coming to help. So uh, we got through it. Uh, thank the Lord it's melting. Uh, where I live, it's, this morning there was still a sheet of ice, but it's starting to melt there. Director uh, Luttrell, let's get these kids back to school here next week sometime, okay? <laughs> but unless there's any questions, that'll conclude my report. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Report from Education Committee, Commissioner Marlow. Education <laughs> Committee met January the 11th uh, here at the courthouse. Minister in the packet, move that you receive the file. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. And Director of Schools report, Director Lutch report. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, you have my report as well in front of you. Uh, just the normal stuff, attendance, enrollment. Did include our school letter grades that came out, a few, seven, I guess that was last month. Uh, just again, wanted to highlight that. You have those 10 and 8 schools, 7B schools, and 6 schools that were C. So we're proud of all of our schools for, for their performance. And along with that, followed up with that, <clears throat> part of the TISA formula for funding <coughs> included an outcome portion and we did not know what that outcome the rules were not written until just a few weeks ago so we we uh, we really didn't know how what the, what the rules of the game but if you can see on our outcome payments we received a total of 1.7 million dollars and you have that broke down uh, in your packet showing elementary uh, it was over TCAP scores of ELA then you get into the middle school, you see the parameters, and then our high schools. Uh, so we got that. We're excited about that. And that's state money. That's not local money. And what the board has decided to do is to 2% uh, across the board raise for all employees who we'll voted on. And uh, beginning, we, we started that January 15th paycheck. So we're excited about that. We'll be bringing that revenue to get it in uh, in our budget. and. We did not budget for that because we didn't know what the rules were. So this year we will, in our budget, we will be including uh, uh, that line item for those outcomes. Uh, that can fluctuate because it is purely on outcomes, but I want to congratulate our, our schools, our teachers, our administrators, and all of our employees. Uh, and, and we showed them that we appreciate that by giving 2% raise, which just to remind, that'll be 7% raise for school employees this year. And, uh, all within our budget and, and they've earned that and, and that will be the plan moving forward on our outcome money to try to get this pay where it needs to get uh, it's what I plan on doing with it and how we plan on using it. Uh, did have have a clear clean internal audit report which is I commend all of our bookkeepers and finance department and uh, that is quite an accomplishment for our district our size uh, to have no internal audit findings this year. Uh, Inclement weather days, we did, started with 12. We're down after tomorrow. We are out tomorrow. Uh, we'll be down to six. Uh, and we'll just have to watch that moving forward. Included also four years of open enrollment for next school year. Shows the schools that we have that have seats available and been deemed for open enrollment. And we'll be, uh, the applications are open February the 1st to March the 2nd, but I wanted you to go ahead and have that. If you have schools in your area, you can see who has open zone uh, seats. Construction project updates, West Wilson Middle School is coming along, still receiving some uh, material delays. Uh, our meeting was canceled last week. We'll be uh, following up this week, try to get an update on that meeting. 
Uh, Mount Duke Middle School still continued working there, Lagardo Elementary. Uh, you, if you've been out by there, you see they're preparing that site, moving dirt. Uh, board did approve uh, to finance the design for the next elementary school, which will be on Central Pike. That will be within, if you remember, we allocated, set that money aside in our budget. And uh, we did uh, approve last month, the board approved to start that process in designing that. Also, we did conduct a survey. Board wanted me to do a survey on thoughts on Watertown Middle School. And we got 771 responses, which is pretty good. Uh, and you can see it's broken down what the response is, what that community would like to see done with that middle school in, in future building projects. Uh, that is my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Here, motion to approve the report. Motion. Second. 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 All right, discussion now. Commissioner Marlowe. Yeah, Mr. Luttrell, is there any act, active legislation um, trending right now that might be detrimental to our school system? I think what you're referring to is the voucher. You've not seen me talk about it with you yet. Uh, I prefer to wait on the language of the bill. We've yet to see that bill filed unless it got filed today. Uh, I can tell you from what we have been told is going to be in the bill, I will adamantly be in opposition of a voucher program. Uh, I've been doing that, looking at that for years. The research is not there to back it up. It's not physical responsible. Uh, it's being said that we will not lose any state funding, but part of TISA is student-based funding. It's individual student funding. I'm for that. We see the benefit of it, especially when you put outcome. I'll give you an example. During COVID, we lost approximately 2,000 students whose parents made the choice to do other things, and I understand that and respect that. But we lost, under this plan, we would lose that funding for wherever they go. When they transfer out, we don't get that base funding. Our budget in the district is size is based upon total enrollment. Uh, I, I'm not sure what, can I say it would be detrimental I've been told it's a philosophical disagreement. Well, it is. It's to core. I'm a public educator. I believe in what we do. Uh, I, I don't know. Is it one year, two year, three years? But if we lose one student, we lose money, and I can't support that. Uh, so it might be a time when the bill comes out, but I do want to see the bill. I, I don't want to overreact until I see exactly what's in the bill, and at that time I'll be able to report to you and give you a better uh, understanding of how potentially it could impact our funding. What about federal funding? Uh, last I've heard on that, I think you've got Senate has came out with with the report saying basically, if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, they don't feel like we can reject federal funding. The House is we're waiting on a report out of the House. They've not made the report. Uh, we'll just have to see. Commissioner Glover. Just to be clear on it, you said 7% went to teachers in July? 5% in 5 July, now 2%. When did the 2% go in effect? January. It was on January, January 15th. 15th. Right now, our classified, they work, their, their payroll's two weeks behind, so it'll be on the 30th paycheck. Okay. And I know it's a little early, but are you, do you have any idea what you're anticipating the raise will be in July? Well, we're on a plan due to the state law where we have to have the minimum starting pay four years <coughs> to 50000 we just projected out, while I did was divided that out, the 5%, put us on a 5% per year for the next four years. So uh, I, I know I'm going to be looking for 3% and would love to go ahead and do the 5% because what we're doing with this money, other counties are doing the same thing. We've got to close the gap uh, with, with similar sized districts and how we compete for pay. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Professor D's report, Mr. Ms. Murphy's uh, report is in the packet. I hear a motion to approve it. Exactly. Discussion? Seeing an all in favor say aye. 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 Trustee's report is also in there. to hear a motion? Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Road <coughs> Superintendent report, Mr. Steve Murphy. <coughs> Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, in your packets, you should have the new road list for uh, 2024, 863 miles would be the total. Uh, we're still running the slope moors and stuff when the 
weather's permitting, which it, as everybody knows this last week, the weather wasn't permitting. So we're doing patchwork when we can, we're doing our general maintenance, and uh, our guys worked. Uh, one thing I want to say, I appreciate what our guys have done. They've done a heck of a job. I know we don't get that most time. It's a good cussing, so we used to that. But anyway, we, you know, the guys put in over 800 hours this last week. And that's, if you've never sit in one of them trucks, a lot of, a lot of you guys will know. But if you've never sit in one of them trucks, going down the road with 74,000 pounds, it ain't no fun. Because you don't know where you're going to end up. But I want to say thank you to my guys, because they, they're the ones that get out there and do it. And I just, all I'm in is, I'm the one sitting there worrying about them. But anyway, that concludes my report. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor. Um, I appreciate you getting out and getting the road scraped and all that stuff, but when do you think you'll be running the bush hogs? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's going to be a little while. If you'll bring your son on, it's just like I heard a man say earlier this, uh, this week. <clears throat> God put the snow here and God can take it away. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Murphy. You do have an IT report that's in your packet and uh, an HR report that's in your packet. We've already done Ag Center and Expo. We're moving with Public Works Committee. Uh, Commissioner Weathers? No report. Uh, Ag Center Management, Commissioner Scruggs? Ag Center Management, Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Animal Control, Commissioner Breeze? Animal Control met on December 18th at 6.30 p.m. in the upstairs conference room. The minutes are in your packet. I move they be received and filed. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Audit, Commissioner Glover. No report. No report. Broadband, uh, Commissioner Franklin. No report. Development Tourism, Commissioner Brown. No report. Ethics, Commissioner Dow. No report. Go figure that one. Finance, Commissioner Costley. No report. Health and Recreation, Commissioner Smith. No report. Insurance, Commissioner McFarland. No report. Judicial, Commissioner Gentry. Judicial Committee met January 9th. Uh, I make a motion on those minutes be received and filed. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Plan and so, zoning, Commissioner excuse McFarland. Me, excuse sorry. me, Mayor. I'm sorry. We also met tonight. The minutes will be in next month's back. Yes, sir. Thank you. Plan and zoning, Commissioner McFarland. No report. Rules, Commissioner Hobbs. No report. Urban <coughs> Town Facility, Commissioner Scruggs. Urban Town Facility, January 12th, Administrative Packages, Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Finance Director's Report, Mr. Aaron Maynard. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I have to uh, confess to a mistake, not my first and probably not my last. You have a revised finance report on your desk. When I looked at the report that was originally in your packet, I looked down and you'll look and see that the one in front of you says that through December, we had $10,572,000 in property tax. And when I saw that, I'd been in meetings all day. I've got six different groups meeting in my office. And when I saw that, I said, that can't be right. But it turns out it was right, and you have a handout here that shows that on uh, between January 1st and January the 5th of 2024, uh, basically you brought in uh, 14.9 million, almost 15 million. So basically the money came in a little late from the mortgage companies. It is here, so nothing, nothing to worry about, but uh, I just needed to let you know that there was actually a, a mistake made, and it was mine. Um, otherwise, I mentioned to you briefly, uh, I've got six groups. I've got an inventory group working on uh, inventorying everything from computers and printers to eventually trucks and other equipment. Um, you know, we have a good uh, list of stuff that is over $10,000. If it costs over $10,000, that is our capitalization threshold. We've got a good list of it. We don't necessarily have as good a list as we should have on uh, computers and peripheral items, so we're working on that. Uh, with Aaron Wilson, by the way, thank you. He's one of the members on that team. Uh, I've got a strategic planning group. I've got a group working with ClearGov. Uh, I've got an insurance group, of course, grants and service efforts and accomplishments, and I'll be talking more about those things 
in the coming year as we go. But that concludes my report, unless you have any questions for me. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Maynard. Report from the Budget Committee, Commissioner Marlowe. Budget Committee met December the 18th and January the 11th. Minutes are in your packet. I move they be received and filed. Any discussion? Seeing that all in favor say aye. Aye. Resolutions, Commissioner Marlowe. Resolution 24-1-1, classifying the public roads in Wilson County. Move to approve. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Resolution 24-1-2, amending the budget and appropriation resolution to make an appropriation from general fund to stormwater. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Commissioner Evans, all hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. <coughs> 23 and 2, resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-3, amending the budget and appropriation resolution to make an appropriation from general fund to juvenile services and probation. I got a motion here, second. Second. Any discussion now? See none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Commissioner, all hearts and minds good with your vote? Please record. 23 and two, resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-4, amending the budget and appropriation resolution to make an appropriation from general fund to judicial commissioners. So moved. Discussion? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Commissioner, all hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 23 and 2, resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-5, amending the budget and appropriation <coughs> resolution for line item transfers and building inspector and zoning codes. So Motion to second. Commissioner Dow. Remind me again why we're doing this, why, why we're separating the, the two. They divided the departments up according to Mr. Cashier's and put um, one department under one budget and another under the other. He's in the back. Do you want to ask any questions? Yeah. So who, who's going where? Is somebody moving or? Is there two department heads? Yes, I have two department heads for the two different departments. One is Karen Murphy, and the other is uh, Chris Richardson, uh, who's the chief building official for building codes. Uh, Karen Murphy would be over the zoning enforcement office. We did hire two additional employees, which you had uh, approved over the past two budget cycles um, to help fulfill the zoning enforcement side. Uh, and we just feel that it would be uh, clear cut in terms of uh, chains of command and also operations in terms of what's going on in building codes with uh, adoption of building codes inclusive of commercial codes and the zoning enforcement uh, okay, roles. So are they going to have two separate budgets? Yes. More <clears throat> next year? There may be needs assessments, but my goal is to try to keep the budgets in check with where they have been. But you're going to have the same amount of people, but we're going to split the well, departments. We, We've added two additional people, so our budget has increased by those two salaries. All right. And so the budget will not change. Is that what you're saying? That's that's my goal. That's my goal. Now, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to rely upon the two department heads and discuss what needs they proceed with the split of the budget. It's not going to change the remainder. This that's why, right? That's my goal. No. <laughs> yeah. That's go. Uh, would you rather wait to do this next year instead of? No, sir. There's no unseen. There's nothing major. No, sir. I would rather have some time before budget cycle so that we have some time to kind of see if I have shorted one or the other of the departments on the line item. Other questions. Mr. Gentry. There's no increase in money this year. <clears throat> so two spots. 
No, sir. I have. I do have a budget approved. I do have a budget amendment following this for uh, fifteen thousand additional dollars for a truck because the current line item only has twenty five thousand. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. <coughs> All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 22 yes, one no. 22 yes, one no. Resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-6, amending the budget and appropriation resolution to make an appropriation from general fund to building inspector. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 22 yes, one no. Resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-7, mm -hmm. amending the budget and appropriation resolution to make an appropriation from general fund from the opioid lawsuit <laughs> settlement to the Sheriff Department, Mid-Cumberland Human Resources, and Drug-Free Wilco. Any discussion? Are you ready to vote? <clears throat> Please cast your vote. Commissioner Gentry? All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 23 yes, 2 absent. Resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-8, amending the budget and appropriation resolution for line item transfers and sheriff's department. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Commissioner McFarland. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 23 and 2, resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-9, amending the budget and appropriation resolution for line item transfer in the Sheriff's Department. Motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 23 and 2, resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-10, amending the budget and appropriation resolution to make an appropriation from general fund to Sheriff's Department. Second. Discussion now. <coughs> Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Commissioner Evans, McFarland. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 23 and 2, resolution passes. Resolution 24-1-11, whereas the Board of Education's federal project fund grants are approved by the Tennessee Department of Education, the budgets of the school federal projects fund and grants shall be budget approved by the Tennessee Department of Education. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed? Record reflected unanimous. Resolution 24-1-12, amending the budget and appropriation resolution by approving Board of Education Budget Amendment 24-05. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion now? Seeing none, are you ready to vote? Please cast your vote. Mr. Dow. All hearts and minds good with your vote. Please record. 23 and 2, resolution passes. Any old business to come before the body? Any new business? I've got new business. Commissioner Breeze? Yes. Um, I'll be brief. If you'll take a look, I put um, two bill summaries on your desk this evening. Um, the first is Senate Bill 1710, House Bill 1629. And what it is is an, an act to amend the Tennessee Code Annotated Section 67.4409 relative to the rec recordation tax. 
which would require, as introduced, would require half of the unencumbered revenue from the recordation tax to be distributed to counties for school debt and school capital projects. So as we've been talking the last six months, probably more than that, about the idea of increasing AFT, this would actually bring in more revenue potentially than an AFT increase. So what this is, the recordation tax is already in, it's already collected right now. So it's 37 cents per hundred for every real estate transfer that's done. So that money is already given to the state. So this is a current revenue stream. Now what this bill does is it's requesting that half of that revenue remain in counties so they can then turn around and use those funds to be able to um, pay for school debt and school capital projects. So this would be really beneficial to Wilson County. So I'd really like to potentially have a legislative ad hoc meeting to discuss this and potentially even do a resolution in support of this particular bill um, to give you an idea as to what this would generate. I talked to Jackie Murphy because um, this uh, the transfer tax actually goes to register of deeds and then goes to the state. Last year, so 2023, they collected $11,687,405.88. So half of that, if we were able to keep it, is $5,843,702.94. How many schools would that Which would go build? a far distance. So that's the first bill I'd like to take or call your attention. Okay, the second bill is Senate Bill 1741, House Bill 1835. <laughs> this actually would amend uh, sales and use tax. As introduced, allocates 2.83% of the sales and use tax collected in the 11 fastest growing counties, of which Wilson is one, and requires such counties to earmark earmark such revenue for educational facilities maintenance and construction and infrastructure. This one I can't give you actual numbers because I don't know what 2.83 percent of the total sales tax revenue generated for the state is and I also don't know based on the caption as to how that would be split between the, the 11 but this also would be very beneficial. So just two bills to call your attention to and it may be another one that we may want to support for Wilson County. So, thank you. Any other new business to come before the body? I need one more motion. We are adjourned.